What's up everybody, it's Max Digital here, where I help you break down technology. And we're going to be comparing the A52 with the A51 and the A50, all great budget options from Samsung. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what the differences are. So the newest uh, one in the bunch is the A52 and the pricing for the US is probably gonna be around $400. Um, once it's here, you could uh, probably get it on prepaid. It's probably going to go that route. The Galaxy A51, um, you can find it on third market, uh, third party market websites such as Swappa for probably like maybe 200 bucks. And then the Galaxy A50, that one can be found for a real good deal at around 100 bucks or so. All these are pretty much great budget options as to their Galaxy S20, S21 uh, brethren. Um, it's basically, it's gonna offer a lot of the same features, but they do cut corners in some areas, kind of like the Galaxy S20 FE in a sense, but it goes even a cheaper in price. So let's go ahead and see what differences we get. All three of these phones are LTE versions of, uh, of themselves. Uh, there's a 5G version for A52, A51, and I'm not too sure about the A50, but regardless, LTE is still a, a viable option in 2021. And um, yeah, if, unless you wanted to get more upload speeds, download speeds, and you're in a good coverage area, go ahead and uh, get the uh, 5G versions of these phones. But other than that, LTE is still pretty good. So for the size of these devices, they all pretty much stayed around the same. So they're around 6.3 inches tall, around 2.9 inches wide, and about 0.3 inches thick. So they all stayed around the same size. For the weight, uh, they did vary a bit. The A52 is, a, is coming in heavier now at 6.67 ounces or 189 grams. The A51, comes in lighter at 6.07 ounces or 172 grams. And then the lightest of the bunch was the A50 at a 5.86 ounces or 166 grams. So the trend from the A50 all the way up is starting to get a little bit heavier. The build quality also stayed the same. They're all pretty much gonna be plastic devices. That's the big difference between a mid-range or a budget phone is that they're all gonna be um, usually plastic on the Android side and the flagships have some type of quality, either it be a more metal or steel type feeling in the back or a glass feeling in the back. And that's what makes the build quality better, just the, the good feel of it. But these are all gonna be a plastic uh, feel to the back. The A50 and 51 do not have dust and water resistance. That's something new on the A52. It's rated at IP67 dust and water resistant up to one meter. So you could dunk it, submerge it for one meter up to 30 minutes. So not too shabby. So Samsung has always been known to have really great screens and none of these phones disappoint. They all have a super AMOLED display. The A52 does have it 90 hertz, which keeps it really, really nice. And all these phones relatively kept the display the same size. We have 6.5 inches on the 52 and 51, but the 50 was a tiny bit smaller at 6.4 inches. They uh, varied a little bit in screen to body ratio. The A52 is 85, 87 for the 51, and 85 to the 50. Resolution stayed the same for all, all these devices for the most part. We got 1080 by 2400 on the A52 and 51, and then 1080 by 2340 on the A50. So uh, very, very close. They all have um, full HD displays. For PPI, the 52 is at 405, 51 is 405, and uh, A50 is 403, so they all kept the same PPI. Um, the uh, all have Gorilla Glass, except the A52 has Gorilla Glass 5, while the other ones have Gorilla Glass 3. I don't see anything really different from these screens. They're just super nice, super AMOLED. Um, that 90 hertz, you might notice it once in a while, but for the most part, um, that screen is just beautiful to watch movies and browse the web and stuff like that.
So all these phones are running the latest Android 11 software update. Um, and they're all running at least 3.0 Samsung UI. So these are all gonna, are gonna feel exactly the same with the same type of features for the most part. Um, it's kind of good that even the A50 is running Android 11 and it was upgraded from Android Pi 9.0 when it first launched. So it's kind of good that Samsung is updating even its mid-range devices. So it really, really makes this decision easier uh, than to default option of getting the uh, flagship thousand dollar devices for the chipset they're all a little bit different but the latest a52 comes with the qualcomm snapdragon 720g the a51 is exynos 9611 a50 is exynos 9610 i'll be totally honest with you you're not for the average person 99 percent of people out there you're not going to notice the difference in performance these are all pretty decent chips when they launched and they'll continue to be being pretty good chips for the foreseeable future with normal apps that people use. Netflix, Spotify, WhatsApp, um, Google Photos, um, any type of, you know, Gmail, all your regular um, go-to everyday apps. These processes will handle them like nothing. We do see a big upgrade on the A52 with the storage. It comes in with a hefty 128 gigs of internal storage. The A51 and A50, they came with 64 gigs of storage. So a big upgrade with internal storage on the A52. I don't see anybody needing more than 128 gigs. But if you do, you're a power user, you like to shove in a lot of music, movies, downloads, pictures, you want to have everything on your phone. All these phones have a micro SD card slot, which is pretty awesome. You'll never run out of storage. You can upgrade them for cheap. Um, and it's pretty nice that these mid-range phones still have micro SD card slots because the flagships are really taking them away. As for the RAM, um, they all, all these phones come in different options of RAM, but they all start off at four gigs, which is okay. Um, if you're not a big power user, four gigs of RAM will be fine for most people. You could step it up and get uh, options with six and eight gigs of RAM. The storage you could also internal storage you could also upgrade to uh 256 on these uh, on these models except for the a50 so you got plenty of storage options and plenty of ram options on these devices so all of these phones have multiple cameras on the back the a52 has a 64 main camera the a51 has a 48 megapixel main camera and the A50 has a 25 megapixel camera. So uh, the newer the, the phone, the more megapixels it has for the main sensor. For the ultra wide, um, the A52 is 12 megapixels, A51 is 12 megapixels, eight megapixels for the ultra wide on the A50. Then we have the useless cameras. That's, that's what I call them. The, the A52 has five megapixel macro, a51 5 megapixel macro and the a52 has the 5 megapixel depth same thing for the a51 and the a50 only has a uh, 5 megapixel depth camera for the third one there isn't a macro but you only should be worried honestly in the main camera and the ultra wide i consider the other macro and depth cameras pretty much useless I don't think people are going to use them enough to even care that they're there. More importantly is the ultra wideness goodness. But honestly, all even though they all have different megapixels, they're all going to take pretty decent pictures. The, this phone line is pretty good at uh, giving you a decent camera. Very good camera, actually, for the price that you get. Now, for the uh, video quality, you're getting 4K on both the, 50, the A52 and A51. Um, the A50 only has 1080p, but these are all going to be great options for taking video, even at 1080p on the A50. I don't think a lot of people take advantage of that 4K anyways, but if you do, it's there. For the selfie uh, camera, the uh, A52 and 51 have 32 megapixel selfie camera. A50 has a 25 megapixel selfie camera. For video, the A52 4K, A51 4K, 1080p for the A50. Not a lot of big difference, not a, not a big downgrade on the A50. 
um, they're all pretty good for selfie pictures and video. One awesome thing that all three of these phones have is a headphone jack. So if you haven't fully embraced wireless all the way, these are great to hook up your mic, your headphones, and your aux cord with your car to listen to music. So big ups for all for this whole phone line. All these Android phones here are running with USB type C. And it's a very underrated port. This is the same port found on other devices such as Chromebooks, MacBooks, Windows PCs tablets android tablets mac um, ipads other devices uh is pretty much going to be very versatile it's the same port so you could interchange and use cables depending on the wattage for all these same devices one of the most impressive features of all these device of, of that all these devices have that's really impressive that's usually found on the flagship and that's found on these devices that are impressive to me is that they all have a under the display fingerprint sensor, which to me is one of the more contemporary cool features that sets it apart from older devices and cheaper devices. So it's awesome that all these phones, so under 500 bucks, you could definitely pick up a phone with a fingerprint optical display sensor. So that's awesome. Next, all these phones have great battery. This is another thing that the A, you know, this, this line of phones have the A50, 51, and 52, great battery life. The A52 has the biggest one. It's upgraded to a 4,500 4, milliamp battery. Then the 51 and 52 have a 4,000 milliamp battery. And nowadays, honestly, I think the minimum a smartphone should have is 4,000 milliamps. Honestly, anything below that is gonna give you sucky ass battery life. Luckily, these phones have what it takes to have uh, your phone last most of the day, if not all day. And if you do manage to text that battery, that all day, use it all night, when watching the web, uh, browsing videos, music all day, you're gonna wanna hook it up to a fast charge and these phones all offer fast charging. You got 25 watts on the A52, and then you got 15 watts on the 51 and 50. So they should bring you back in business with battery life if you hook it up for a few minutes. So the A52 has been a welcome addition, a welcome upgrade for the most part. Um, the evolution of the A50 to the A51 to the A52 has been gradual. There hasn't been any crazy changes, but you do get better cameras. You get a bigger battery. You got 4K. Um, you don't, you don't, you don't see a big jump from the A51 to the A52, but you do see a big jump from the A50 to, from the A A50 to the A52. I mean, these all, all these phones, um, are found under $500. They have, they're very impressive. You get 90 Hertz on the A52. They all run Android 11. So they're being upgraded, which is uh, nice. They all have micro SD card slots the a52 upgraded in storage cameras been awesome since a50 and it just got better and better as time went on i mean these honestly the a50 line a51 and a52 all these are really great competition and a great alternative than getting a thousand dollar galaxy s21 for, or something so on that note guys tell me what you guys think of all these phones which one you have and uh, see you in the next video. Peace.